Hello, I'm Laura Wang, and today we're going to be talking about vaginal wet mount interpretation. Leucorrhea is one of the most common complaints that an office gynecologist encounters uh, and accounts for up to 40% of all gynecologic office visits. It can be a diagnostic challenge. Uh, accurate diagnosis requires a comprehensive systemic approach that incorporates information obtained through history, uh, physical examination, pH, and a vaginal wet mount. Vaginal wet mount is a two-step process that consists of, number one, a normal saline preparation, uh, and number two, a potassium chloride preparation. The normal saline preparation allows for evaluation of squamous cell morphology, uh, lactobacilli presence, inflammatory process, and potential infectious microorganisms. Together, these elements tell the story of the vaginal ecosystem. Uh, the potassium chloride preparation, on the other hand, allows for detection of fungal elements. This is a typical normal saline preparation. What we see here are mature epithelial cells shed from a well-estrogenized vagina. The cells are large, they are polygonal, with abundant cytoplasm, uh, with very small, condensed nuclei. Uh, please note the relative lack of leukocytes. Lactobacilli. Lactobacilli are commonly seen in the discharge of a well-estrogenized vagina. They appear as rods of various length. Occasionally, they can attach end-to-end -to, -end to form long filaments. Uh, these may be easily confused with hyphae of Canada species, except these are non-branching and are typically thinner and more delicate than uh, what you see with Canada. Um, these are clue cells. Clue cells are the results of non-lactobacilli bacteria adhering to epithelial cell surfaces. The cellular borders are obscured and appear fuzzy. The cytoplasm appear, um, appears grainy. Clue cells by itself is not diagnostic of bacterial vaginosis. Bacterial vaginosis diagnosis is based on one of two criteria. First is a Nugent score, um, which is based on gram stains. Since it's not readily available in the office, it's less used. The more commonly used criteria is the AMSOS criteria. There are four items in the AMSOS criteria. To make the diagnosis, three out of the four items, or three out of the four criteria need to be fulfilled. These four criteria are homogeneous milky white discharge, clue cells greater than 20% of total, pH greater than 4.5, and a positive whiff test. Please note the relative lack of lactobacilli, which is typically seen um, in patients with uh, bacterial vaginosis. Also, please note the um, fairly um, normal ratio of squamous epithelial cells to leukocytes. This is a picture of parabasal cells. Parabasal cells are immature squamous epithelial cells that typically reside near the stratum basalis. Compared to a mature squamous epithelial cell, which you see to the right of the screen, the parabasal cells are smaller, rounder, with disproportionately larger nuclei. However, unlike dysplastic cells whose nuclei are polymorphic, hyperchromatic, with irregular borders, these nuclei are uniform in size with smooth borders. This is a review of squamous cell morphology uh, as it migrates from the stratum basalis up towards the stratum corneum. During the upper migration, the cell matures, the cytoplasm enlarges, and the nucleus becomes more pygnotic. 
Parabasal cells are seen in conditions that expose the basal layer to vaginal secretions. Examples are estrogen deficiency seen in menopause, uh, erosive dermatosis such as seen with lichen planus, also seen in inflammation such as trichomoniasis and DIV or descomative inflammatory vaginitis. In this preparation, the abundance of leukocytes signal an inflammatory response, such as those seen with trichomoniasis or DIV. Um, this normal saline wet mount is an example of trichomonas vaginalis. Trichomonad is a protozoan. It is a flagellate organism similar to the size of a WBC. It assumes a teardrop shape when it's warm and active. However, as the specimen cools, the trichomonads become round and immotile and therefore difficult to distinguish from the abundant surrounding WBCs. This contributes to the poor sensitivity of the wet mount in the diagnosis of Trichomonas vaginalis. Please note the abundant uh, leukocytes with a squamous WBC ratio of less than one. This shows the relative diagnostic sensitivity of various tests for Trichomonas. As you can see, wet mal has a sensitivity at best of 60%. So it's not surprising that in many patients uh, with a history and examination suspicious for trichomonas that were not able to see motile trichomonads to confirm the diagnosis. In that case scenario, um, one could also treat based on suspicion uh, or we can ask for a um, aptima TV assay this is the only FDA-approved nucleic acid amplification test. It's a transcription-mediated amplification test. Um, sample types include endocervical swabs, vaginal swabs, urine specimen, and such. As you can see, the sensitivity is between 95 to 100 percent. So in patients who are highly suspicious, this is a good tool to use for confirmation. Here's another uh, normal saline preparation. Besides the um, mature squamous epithelial cells, you're able to see hyphae and budding yeast. Oftentimes, these fungal elements are obscured by um, epithelial cells, and that's where the potassium chloride preparation comes in. The potassium chloride preparation employs a 10 to 20 percent potassium chloride solution that dissolves the cell membranes and keratin of epithelial cells, thus allows for more ready visualization of the fungal elements such as the hyphae, the pseudohyphae, the budding yeast. By applying gentle pressure to the cover slip, uh, you can help to disrupt the cell membranes and thus enhance uh, keratin dissolution. I also recommend that you lower the condenser and decrease the light in order to increase the contrast uh, between epithelial cells and the fungal elements. Uh, Canada appear as uh, budding yeast with or without hyphae uh, or non septate branching pseudohyphae. In this picture, you see hyphae and pseudohyphae, so they're more likely uh, to be of the Elbacan or Tropicalis species. There's no way to distinguish between the two without a culture. And the culture, a culture will also help to determine drug sensitivity and aid in treatment. This is another potassium chloride preparation. Uh, these are budding yeast only and do not have hyphae or pseudohyphae. These are likely of the glabrata or paprapsilosis species. And again, a culture will be required to confirm the species and uh, determine drug sensitivity. Well, as you can see, 
a thoughtfully performed vaginal wet mount in the hands of an astute clinician reveals important clues. I hope this session helps you with the myriad of wet mounts that you will perform in your long career.